Hello, everyone, and welcome to Embodying Your Higher Self, Tools for Living Consciously. And my name is Mr. Chimpaka, and it's great to have you here today for a very special guest. And Lindsay looks like she's just entering the studio now, so um, just sit back and um, enjoy the silence for just a moment, and we will be right back. Hey, welcome, Lindsay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Hi, Michelle. Hi, great to have you today. I, I hear the wind blowing, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn off this fan. It seems to be making a lot of noise in the background. There we go. So, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. I'm just going to introduce you to everybody here who doesn't know Lindsay. She's a dear friend of mine. Uh, Lindsay Harrison is a mother of four beautiful souls, and she has grown up in Asia, surrounded by a balance of Eastern and Western culture. After moving to Bali almost 10 years ago, Lindsay was exposed to many different forms of alternative healing, from Balinese blessing ceremonies and plant medicine, shamanism, hypnotherapy, and Reiki. And having experienced the power and success of Reiki, Lindsay was drawn to learn more about the healing power of the body. And she discovered her calling after working at various retreats and embarked on her own journey to give back to her community. She decided to invite her most trusted and respected healers to help others in a safe and serene environment and Lindsay invites you um, to just absorb all this wonderful information and energy um, and the knowledge that she's going to pass on today. Um, she's going to you know, begin by just sharing her journey and how she became a healer. And um, well, we know a little bit of how, but I'd love to hear more about your journey uh, because I know you started off in hospitality, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, it's, it's really interesting, the journey that I went on, actually. I think it started from very, very early on in my life when I was like three years old. But um, I've always been interested in um, spirituality, if you like. I, my mum would always say, you just sit in your bedroom all day just talking, just talking away. And I believe now, looking back, I was actually speaking to my guides and spirits even back then. But as time goes on and go to school and make friends and things change, you, you lose a little part of yourself. Yes. And I um, found that there was always a place in my life where I didn't really fit into the mold even like during my school days I growing up in Singapore as well you know it was a quite a strict education system I went through and it was all very much about becoming a lawyer a doctor an accountant and whatnot and I never felt that I was any of those things and when I had to choose my university and my subjects that I was going to be taking for A levels back then. Um, my main focuses were psychology, sociology, and media. And um, I remember one of the um, counselors saying to me, "The what do you want to be when you grow up, basically?" And I said, "A counselor." And they said well, you know, that's not really going to make you much money. It was kind of like um, poo-pooed on, if you like. And I was like, okay. So I just that comment alone has stuck with me because it just added to the whole feeling of not fitting in. Well, I can certainly relate to that, Lindsay. I've never felt like I fit 
you know, that I fitted in in my my life and growing up. And I'm a little bit older than you, so <clears throat> spirituality was definitely not a trend as it is today. And uh, people thought I was a witch, and you know, I, it was really terrible. I was pretty ostracized. So um, I, I really get, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners um, today that are listening in can probably relate to that feeling of not belonging, not fitting in. And um, do you, you know, like when you look at your journey and, and how you came from, you know, a more conservative society, you know, Singapore, I've, I've spent a lot of time there. I used to work there and go and, and you know, do um, private sessions with clients. I would fly from Bali about three or four times a year. So it was a very different lifestyle. People were working really, really hard and not having much time for, you know, taking care of themselves or even thinking about doing, you know, alternative healing and that's that kind of thing. And so coming from your mindset, you know, and I know you pretty well and how you've really developed yourself as a healer, um, what were some of the biggest challenges that you had to deal with when you made that choice, like when you finally realized, like, this is my path, this is what I really want to do, uh, what hurdles or what challenges did you deal with when that occurred? Um, interesting question. I, I never really felt that I had to overcome any major hurdles because I was still living that life that not fitting in I didn't feel that I was, um, gosh, how do you say it? It wasn't so much hurdles. It was really, I had to just go within myself mm -hmm. to really, truly understand why I was feeling that way. Right. And I never really got to do that because it was all the societal pressure saying I had to be, I had to do... I mean, I was really lucky. My parents have always been so supportive. In fact, my mum is quite spiritual herself. And so they've always been supportive. And even when I got to university and I um, decided that it wasn't for me and I wanted to drop out, they I was not afraid of telling my parents, even though they invested quite a lot of money in me to go there. <laughs> and they were so fully supportive. They're like, darling, is, you know, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But I felt so ashamed in front of my friends and their parents. And it was like the societal, oh my gosh, she's a dropout. And that, that was a hurdle that I had to overcome because I felt right. like um, I felt quite ashamed if you like, but then it, at the same time, it was one of the best things that I could have done because I came out of it. I got, um, I had to fill in some gaps while I was waiting for my husband to finish uni. So I just started working in hospitality and I absolutely loved it because I'm a people person. I love being around people. And at this time I was in England and I met so many people from, you know, all over the world that I got to work with and um, it just gave me time to just be with people and figure out what it was that I wanted. And I felt that it was less judgmental and, you know, it was a fun time of my life. It was like, you know, my early 20s. Yes. So, um, yeah, it wasn't so much hurdles, but more just taking that time to be me and discover who I was rather than what everyone else said that I should be or what I thought everyone was projecting on me yes I get it that's it's always a challenge to just be authentically you and um, there's always a fear of judgment I think a lot of people can relate to that for sure and um, so let's talk about what the theme is for this podcast which is how to be the catalyst for healing others and um which is a theme I know for Omkara Healing Retreats. Um, so Lindsay and I have partnered. We've put together um, an amazing uh, program which will focus on empowering women in a very intimate uh, kind of VIP setting of, you know, maximum seven, seven, eight, 
eight women max in, uh, on these retreats. So, and our, our sort of, uh, our motto, I guess, is how to put it the best way is all about how, you know, we, by healing ourselves, we become the catalyst for everyone else in our lives to heal too. So tell us, what does that really mean? You know, give me an example or uh, uh, explain that a little bit more. When you say that, the first thing that comes into my mind is just be the change that you wish to see in the world. Yes. And I think that with um, healing, like healing is not all rainbows, fairies and you know butterflies it's actually a really messy hard mm. journey to go on because you face parts of yourself you see things in others that you realize are projections and it comes truly at the end of the day it just comes down to knowing who you are and self-love and i've been on <laughs> quite a few retreats myself. I've seen many, many, many healers over the years because I always feel that there's a part of me and I think that searching and seeking and, you know, I actually had the epiphany when I did my Reiki training that what I needed was the validation that this is who I truly am, to have that piece of paper and there is something that shows, even though it's always been intuitively inside of me, it's like I had to seek that validation. Mm. And um, what I've noticed now is I am, oh gosh, I am a completely different person to the person I was 10 years ago. I've learned that from healing myself, I, my, the way I react and respond to situations, to people, to things that may have triggered me years ago, now I just simply let it flow over me. And I've seen it around my own family. I mean, obviously they've had to deal with me going through all of these um, ceremonies and healings, and I've brought them along on a lot of the journeys. My daughter, in fact, she's, she's Reiki trained herself when she's 12 years old. Um, just to show them that there is a world out there that isn't all about media and who you should be and who you think you should be. Everything, everything comes from inside and we have this as an innate gift and it's our gift to find it and to share it with others. Beautiful. I love what you said. Yeah. And it's, um, it is such a journey, the healing process. And, you know, for me, um, being the catalyst for healing others by healing myself, I mean, I've, you know, I've personally recently had an experience last September, I was in Oaxaca and doing a mycology training and there was a ceremony that I participated in, and um, I went into a very deep place, and uh, there was a lot of uh, guilt and pain around me leaving my younger son behind in Bali, and um, the medicine, uh, which is the, you know, the psilocybin that we were working with, which is a really powerful healer, uh, allowed me to connect um, in, into the quantum field. Uh, which I believe really does exist. And I somehow connected um, through that field to my younger son. And I was sending him so much love. I could just feel that love beaming from my heart. Like it was such a powerful, powerful energy. And then about a week later, I talked to him, uh, my son, Jivan. And I said, you know, what were you doing around this time and on this day? Did you notice anything? And he said, oh, wow, that was the day that I was driving my motorbike home and I just, all the tears just started running down my face. And I almost started crying because he literally felt that energy of love that I was sending him. And it was through my healing that there was the rippling effect that he felt that healing. And our relationship has 
has really gotten much stronger since that experience. So I can personally vouch, and I know you can too, that as we heal, everybody in our life starts to heal too and transform, which is really incredible. And which is why, you know, you and I decided to, to partner and offer these healing retreats because we want other people to have that opportunity to experience that and um, to make those kind of deep transformations, you know? <laughs> wow it's, yeah that's so beautiful it's yeah i mean i can't even i can't at the moment think of uh one example but like you i've um ceremony through ayahuasca san pedro mm -hmm. cambo psilocybin for me was the major catalyst um it's the just healing parts of yourself really does impact even my friends my some of my very best friends now they they come to me and they've known Lindsay for 20 years you know and they're just like wow like you've you've changed your life so much and you're mm -hmm. so different how can we be like you because I'm so authentic now mm -hmm. I just I find myself, I won't stand for things that do not resonate with me anymore. I will always speak my truth, which is something I've never been able to do. I was always afraid. Um, I, I love that they come to me and they, they want to be part of the work, my healing journey as well because they've seen the change that it has and it's, yes. it's it's helps them so much and it just makes me so proud and the same with my family my husband he's he's gone down the same path as me and he's he's he himself is on his journey and it's it's lovely to be able to have that impact on people yes that's beautiful that's amazing and i do know your husband he's a he's an uh, extraordinary man and uh, you are together an extraordinary couple. So um, such a blessing to see two people that are, you know, choosing to have a relationship from the space of consciousness, you know, because this is, you know, this is what's going to change um, the vibration of the planet. You know, if we can raise the consciousness in our own lives, then it, it ripples out to everybody else. So, yeah, that's, that's exactly what, it means to be a catalyst for healing others for sure. And um, well, I'd love to know if you have any kind of tool or practice that you feel has been really helpful for you that you'd like to share with the listeners um, because they love getting new tools and ideas of how they can raise their own consciousness or they can become more empowered in their lives. <sighs> For me in particular, as I have four children <laughs> and a working mom, my, my non-negotiable is I need to give myself an hour a day. Yes. I must have that time to myself, be it yoga, some form of exercise, um, just to be alone in my room, in my own energy, because you know, as a mother, you're a provider, a caretaker, and you're always putting other people's needs ahead of your own. Mm. But what has been life changing is realizing it's not selfish for me to take time for myself. By taking time for myself, I have so much more to give to others. And it has yes. to be, it's a non negotiable. And if I, you know, on the weekend, say it gets a bit busy or something, I can feel. Sorry, I lost you there. Oh, yeah. No, I'm here. I'm here. I just was sorry. coughing, so I turned off the volume. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. sorry. No, but I, I feel that if I don't have that hour to myself, then I start getting a bit angsty and my patience yeah. isn't quite there. Um, I do myself still see healers um, occasionally if I feel that I need to connect with someone on that same, you know, vibrational, spiritual level. Yes. Um, 
you. I see you. <laughs> we help My each other. My lifesaver. I know. Thank you so much. <laughs> you are incredible. And you, you know what, it, just doing some of the trainings with you that and that's the other thing just doing short courses doing my training with you was just you know that was another catalyst to all of this it's just stepping up always taking time to continue yes. the growth in learning in in training in and working I work on retreats here in Bali just um connecting with people connecting into the energy with it that's where I get my life force energy and then I'm able to give more to other people oh that's wonderful that's really wonderful um yeah and I I really um really admire you know you Lindsay for you know your full-time mother and you're still so dedicated to uh, you know, taking care of yourself as well and expanding your skills and knowledge. You know, it's, uh, I have another friend who's got seven children and, oh, and she's <laughs> similar to you. And I think, how does she even find time to go to Peru and do the etas? And uh, it's incredible. So it just, it gives people um, hope that, you know, even if you are busy, there's always a way to make time for yourself. And as you give to yourself, you give to others. And I think, I think a lot of people think it's wrong to be selfish and maybe the word doesn't resonate for people. I like the word selfful and, you know, I'm doing something that is allowing me to be selfful <laughs> and full, filling myself up. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, really important. And I think a lot of women out there, you know, have not had that time for themselves, haven't been able to really self-nurture and self-love and get the healing uh, and the support that they need. And, and, and that's what I love about what we're creating with Omkara Healing Retreats because this is what we're offering people. We're offering women in particular that we're focusing on women because that we feel like women are the ones who usually do... Um, sacrifice so much because they they are the the primary um you know caregiver they they tend to be the person who's always uh looking after the children i'm not excluding men i know there are men that are house husbands for sure and we honor you as well but in general women are the main the main caretakers of of their family and so we decided to put together onkara healing retreats with this in mind that we want to give all of you women the opportunity to come and really be taken care of, really be pampered and nurtured and receive healing um, pretty much every day of the retreat in one form or another. So um, we're just both really, really excited about this possibility and, um, and really want to in, you know, invite you to come and give this gift to yourself. So, yeah, that was one thing I wanted to share with everybody. And um, I don't know if there's anything else. What are you? What else are you doing right now, Lindsay? Do you have any other special programs going on? Um, at the moment, no. I'm just working. Um, I work on retreats in Bali that yes. um, that I do energy healings, and I also facilitate psilocybin ceremonies that's right um i like to keep a healthy balance because it, first and foremost i my children are my priority and time seems to be going very very fast and yes teenagers already and so i like to be able to balance both yes balance. absolutely Yes, um, I think it's important to have balance. Yeah, because you need to. And going back to what we were saying before, it's, what you say is so true. It's so important for women because I think we've just been conditioned to believe that we have to do it all. And I've always felt very selfish if I take time out for myself. And it's honestly, it's the best thing you can do because you really come into connection because with yourself and knowing how to provide more. 
Yes, absolutely. I agree. Well, we had we have somebody who just entered the studio, Lizzie. Lizzie, would you like to come on the call and ask um, Lindsay or myself any questions, or just share your own experience with um, you know healing and the journey in your own life? We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions. So I see you're in the studio, but I don't know if you're still there. But don't be shy. Come on, mm -hmm. come on to the call, and you're most welcome. And anybody else who has any questions, uh, we welcome them because um, it's really important. We, we're creating, I, you know, my purpose of doing this podcast is to bring on experts um, in the field of consciousness and that there's a huge field in that. So um, to offer you tools and to share their stories, to inspire you and um, to guide you into um perhaps making different choices that will be more authentically about you and who you are. So I really loved what you shared earlier, Lindsay, about how important it is to be authentic and live your truth. And I really, really believe that as well. So, um, so yeah, you're doing the psilocybin journeys. Lindsay's based in Bali. I, I love technology. I'm here in Mexico um, <laughs> broadcasting this podcast. And it's um, almost 9 p.m. at night here, and it's almost 11 a.m. in the morning in Bali. They're, you know, Bali is like 14 hours ahead. So, yeah, if you're in Bali, um, definitely look Lindsay up. I've put her socials in the comments, and I'll also include them in the um, in the podcast description when I publish the podcast. But, yeah, I mean, if this is calling to you to come and – give yourself the gift of healing, please reach out to myself or Lindsay um, and get in touch with us to find out about our next retreat, which we're uh, planning to hold in Mexico. So for those listeners who are in uh, Canada, in North America, USA, um, or even in Europe, it's not that far away, um, come, come to mm -hmm. experience this incredible magical retreat um, we'd love to have you and we'd love to support you in your healing and transformation. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Lindsay, before we, um, say goodbye and say goodnight to everybody? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom or whatever you want to say. Gosh, I'm on the Doesn't matter. I'm sure once we hang up, I'll come on. <laughs> Oh, I know, I know. That's why. Wow, like, why didn't I say that? Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, and I really appreciate it. And I know our listeners will be happy to hear this when they hear the replay. Um, yeah, I can't think. You know, I mean, also if you're, um, if you want to find Michelle, you know, I'm here in Puerto Escondido in Oaxaca. I just got told from a friend of mine that if you get to Tijuana, you can take a direct flight from Tijuana to Puerto Escondido. And I do do psilocybin one-on-ones and group uh, work as well. And um, for myself, I'm going to be offering an uh, in-person live training in May here in Puerto Escondido, uh, probably five or six day training. Uh, in shamanism. So um, yeah, I haven't done a, an in-person training in years because of the pandemic. So I'm really excited to be offering that as well as the Omkara healing retreats that I'm doing with Lindsay. So I just want to say a big, big thank you to Lindsay. Thank you so much for coming on the call today. Really, thank really has been so great. Thank you so much for having me. You, um, I know I, I'm going to be honest to the listeners but I was incredibly nervous about doing this today, almost <laughs> like an imposter syndrome, if you like. But I'm so glad you got me to do it, Michelle. I'm very Me grateful. too, me too. And I know, I, and that's what makes it real. Like, you know, look, my podcast isn't polished. Everybody knows. Sometimes they hear coughing. <laughs> I don't edit it because I just know that, that I won't ever publish it. So it is raw and real. That's what this podcast is. It's raw and real. And I think the people that follow me, they love it. And the people that want super polished, they won't follow me. And that's okay. <laughs> but if you want to support my podcast, please buy me a cup of coffee. I will put the link in the description as well. And, you know, buying me a cup of coffee helps me 
well, it helps me live, but this podcast is, um, I'm not making any, uh, any income on it. So if you buy me a cup of coffee, that really helps. So thank you everyone. And I just want to say, um, just so grateful for your support and please like, and follow this podcast and share it with friends, you know, and we will keep, I will keep bringing on special guests, hopefully every week now, um, to, you know, to give you some new uh, insights into healing, into education and all kinds of topics that I plan to cover uh, for 2023. So everyone, goodbye for now. And thank you, Lindsay. Let's thank give Lindsay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening as well. <laughs> There's the hand. There's the clap. Woohoo! Awesome. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Bye.